Hello there, I'm Tom. I got a comment on my last video suggesting that I do a generalized world edit tutorial. There are loads of great guides on the internet already, so my video will attempt to cover everything you realistically need to know to be able to take advantage of the tool, in a more condensed style. I'll be using Fast Async World Edit, which is a plugin not a mod, and therefore will require a server to use. 4 provides a few more commands, and is more efficient than regular World Edit. Let's go! Use slash slash help to bring up a list of available commands. I'll also link 4's documentation in the description. The wand command gives you the world edit tool. You can also just grab a wooden axe from the creative menu. Want to get to the top of your build? Type slash up in a number to teleport that many blocks upwards. This also spawns a glass block. The default selection shape is a cuboid. We'll visit some other selection shapes later. Left click and right click with the axe to select the opposing vertices of your cuboid selection. You can also use pause 1 and pause 2, which select the block that your head occupies. This can be shortened to slash slash 1 and slash slash 2. Once you have a selection, you can copy it to your clipboard relative to the block that you are standing on. Slash slash paste simply pastes your clipboard relative to the position that you copied it from. This is very useful for any repetitive design. Your clipboard might contain air blocks, which could disrupt the surrounding region. We can use the undo command, then paste with the flag dash A, which inserts the clipboard without any air. The cut command copies your selection to the clipboard but also removes the selection from the world. Copying and pasting with the dash E flag includes entities, which can be useful when building with item frames, paintings, and so on. Once you have your clipboard, you can manipulate its orientation using the rotate command, which acts in a clockwise direction. Say you've done some detailing and you want to mirror it, you can use slash slash flip and specify a direction in order to mirror the clipboard, then just paste. Use me for the direction and the clipboard will be mirrored in the direction that you are facing. When planning out a build, I like to use the slash slash walls command with my cuboid selection to swiftly create open boxes. You can change all the blocks in your selected region via the set command. Your material can be made up of multiple blocks, separated by commas. The chances for each block to appear are equal. Replace any block with any other block in your selection through slash slash replace. The stack command instantly duplicates your selection in the direction that you are looking at. You don't need to use the copy command here. Another useful one is slash slash move which shifts the selection in the direction that you are looking at by a specified number of blocks. Use percentages before each material in the list to specify ratios, for example in texturing this rock with 80% cobblestone and 20% andesite. The less than mask affects blocks below a specified block. On the other hand, the greater than mask affects blocks above a specified block. The tilde mask affects blocks adjacent to a given block. The asterisk mask randomizes block states for a given block, if it has multiple block states. For example, we can make cool vines using the randomized block states of bamboo. You can easily negate any mask using an exclamation mark, which will do the opposite. Hash solid masks the command to all blocks apart from liquids and air. Hash simplex is a great mask for texturing, which generates a pseudo-random noise pattern given a size and a list of blocks. Note that these blocks are not generated in the order that you write them, so use placeholder blocks and replace them afterwards if you're looking to make a fancy gradient. Hash clipboard is simply a mask of your current clipboard. I use this a lot for placing in blocks with unusual block states, such as these three green candles in my oak trees. I also use this to make a neat, checkered pattern of smooth stone and lodestones. You can apply a global mask to break up more complex commands. For example, global masking to blocks above green wall, and then replacing air with grass and ferns. The same effect can be achieved via combining two or more masks, enclosed in square brackets, with an ampersand, or equally by using speech marks with this syntax shown below. 
prefer this syntax because for me it helps to understand what the command is actually doing. Great builders love to use schematics in order to quickly reuse their previous assets across different worlds. Once you have the build on your clipboard, you can use slash slash schematic save and then the name of the file you want to be called. This will be saved in Four's schematics folder. Conversely, you can use the schematic load command in order to copy any schematic from the schematics folder onto your clipboard and then simply paste it into your world. Four has some great commands for quickly making shapes. For example, slash slash sphere will generate a sphere given a material and radius. The hollow sphere command works the same way. Maybe you can make some bubbles. Make circles quickly using the hollow cylinder command with a height of one. Want an ancient Egyptian pyramid in seconds? Just type slash slash h pyramid with smooth sandstone as the material. You can make a brush with any tool. The sphere brush makes a sphere with a specified radius and material. Use the mask command to only affect those blocks. You can use masking to texture by painting blocks. You can make natural looking rocks using the blob brush, which makes blobs. The blend ball brush is a great tool for smoothing, being similar to Voxel Sniper's blend ball. I like to use the flatten brush when terraforming to make flat areas where I can place trees and structures. Once you've copied your selection, and in this case, make sure you do this one block into the ground, you can use the clipboard brush to quickly place assets around a build. For example, trees on some terrain. The flags dash A, dash O, and dash R paste the clipboard without air, at the origin, and with random rotation, respectively. Four has a few selection shapes other than the cuboid. You can use the cylinder selection, for example, to fill in weird cylindrical shapes. The convex selection shape can be used to select more complicated areas. Left click to start the shape, then add vertices by right clicking new positions. The curve command uses a convex selection to make a curve with a specified material and radius. Need to smooth a large region quickly? Slash slash smooth has your back. Slash slash count tells you how many of a specific block lie within your selection. And forget counting to the middle. I use slash slash center with the material red wall to instantly show me exactly where the middle is. Want to make a swamp for your Shrek theme build, but you're not in one? Change the biome in your selection with the set biome command. Got some of those annoying lighting errors? Slash slash fix lighting reloads the chunks. A useful tool is the replacer, which I use a lot for putting blocks where they're not supposed to go. And finally, you can specify block states in your commands by adding block state equals value in square brackets to the end of the block name or ID. That's obviously not all the commands that 4 provides, but I think that it's a decent overview. I highly recommend that you spend some time just messing around with the commands and looking through the documentation. It can be really fun to discover new things, and it's pretty much how I learn everything that I've demonstrated here. If there's more to come, feel free to put suggestions for future tutorials in the comments. If you learned anything at all from this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching.